While Jenna Ortega may have helped resurrect the Addams Family, she's not, as many of you might know, the first actress to breathe life into Wednesday. The credit, in fact, goes to Lisa Loring, who portrayed the character in a sitcom from 1964 to 1966, and who, in case you're unaware, sadly passed on from a stroke on January 28th. Now, to pay tribute to the original Wednesday, Ortega took to Instagram. In an Instagram story posted, if I'm not wrong, on the 31st of January, the present-day Wednesday actress expressed how she was absolutely devastated at the news. Once more, she also added a photo of the actress as Wednesday, thanking her for everything. For those of you who don't know, Jenna has cited Loring's much lighter iteration as a key inspiration for her breakout role. As a matter of fact, the viral dance scene that you can't go a second without spotting on your socials these days wouldn't have been possible without Lisa's tenacious dance moves from back in the day. Ortega confirmed this during an appearance on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. She said, and I quote, I paid homage to Lisa Loring, the first Wednesday Adams. I did a little bit of the shuffle that she does. Speaking of, since Lisa stopped being in the limelight after 2015, let me introduce you to the late actress with a quick career breakdown. From what I've gathered, she first ventured into the entertainment industry as a model at merely three years old. As for her television career, it began in 1964 with a minor role on an episode of NBC's medical drama, Dr. Kildare. As I mentioned earlier, she was offered her breakthrough role as Wednesday in the Addams Family sitcom the same year. Then, in 1977, some years after the sitcom's conclusion, she reprised her role for a made-for-TV horror comedy titled Halloween with the New Addams Family. Moving on, between 1980 to 1983, she portrayed Cricket Montgomery in CBS's long-running soap opera As the World Turns. When it comes to films, she's most noticeably remembered for her role as Dory in Hal Freeman's 1987 American horror film Blood Frenzy. If you're a classic movie enthusiast, you might recognize her as Roxy from the 1988 action drama film Death Feud as well. Now, while I can't be too sure, there are some sources that suggest that in the early 2000s, she quit acting for a while to work in a hotel chain. I feel like it might have had something to do with her heroin problem and later rehabilitation efforts. It's also been pinned on, now that I think about it, her four or so failed marriages and constant rejections at auditions. But despite everything, she made a comeback somewhere in the 2010s with horror films and horror comedies like Dr. Spine and Way Down in Chinatown. After 2015, which is when Dr. Spine came out, she was mostly spotted at the Addams Family conventions and fan meets. With her career out of the way, let's briefly discuss the details of her passing. As I pointed out in the beginning, Lisa died of a stroke. This news was confirmed by her daughter, Vanessa Foomberg, who, while speaking to The Hollywood Reporter, explained that high blood pressure is what induced it. She also revealed that the actress died peacefully while holding hands with both her and her sister. A Facebook post that a family friend by the name of Lori Jacobson made has also revealed several details. For instance, aside from high blood pressure, Lisa's smoking habits were also believed to have brought the stroke on. To add to that, she was on life support for a few days before her passing. The post also lauded Lisa's legacy and described her as a ton of fun. That being said, Jacobson and Ortega weren't the only people to express their condolence. Christina Ricci also reacted to the news. We all know that before Jenna came along, Christina's portrayal of Wednesday in the 90s was the most prominent version of the character, and much like Jenna, she was also heavily inspired by Lisa's original take on it. For this reason, Ricci took to Instagram to react to the news as well. The actress, as some of you might have noticed, posted a headline from The Hollywood Reporter captioned with a broken heart emoji. Aside from Ricci, some other celebrities like Luis Guzman, for instance, also reacted to the news. Guzman tweeted how Lisa had set the stage for a beautiful Wednesday. The Munsters actor, Butch Patrick, on the other hand, 
explained how he was in her company just a few weeks before she died via Facebook. He also revealed how the actress, who he was excellent friends with, had become really weak in her final days and wished her Godspeed. When it comes to the newer The Addams cast, apart from Luis and Ortega, Catherine Zeta-Jones also paid a tribute to Lisa. She, much like Ortega, posted a photo of the original goth girl, captioned Rest in Peace. Now, while she was an inspiration to several actors and good friends with many of her colleagues, she can also be credited with teaching millions of people out there that it's okay to be weird, which is why a number of them turned to their socials to pay their respects. One Twitter user, for example, expressed how they adored her character growing up, and that were it not for her, they would never have learned that being weird was fine and dandy. Another, similarly, recounted how they loved watching and laughing at reruns of the show in their childhood. A tweet that I seem to agree with the most is how Loring defined Wednesday at a time where she was nothing more than a frowning newspaper drawing. Yep, in case you didn't know, the family was created by cartoonist Charles Chaz Adams and first appeared in The New Yorker in 1938. Now, while the role may have gone on to become the highlight of her career, it turns out it wasn't easy for her to play Wednesday. In an old interview, she revealed how she was only five when she first started filming for the sitcom. She didn't even know how to read back then. Why did they take her on, you ask? Well, the producer, David Levy, liked her long hair. That and her pout, yes. It's what won him over since it was so essential to the character. This mention of pouts reminds me that reading wasn't the only problem the young Lisa ran into while filming. Her co-stars, John Astin, Carolyn Jones, Jackie Coogan, and Ted Cassidy also got in the way of her portrayal. No, there was nothing sinister at play. It's just that they were so funny, they'd make it difficult for her to keep a straight face during takes. Now, if all this talk of Lisa's amazing portraiture has got you interested in the original sitcom, assuming of course you haven't already seen it, then it's your lucky day. Believe it or not, the Sinister Show is still available for viewing. You can catch it free of cost on Pluto TV, freebie from Amazon Prime as well as Tubi. However, if you don't have access to any of these services, then I'd suggest that you watch or rewatch the 1991 and 1993 movies starring Ricci, Angelica Houston, and Raul Julia. They're among some of my favorites. Now, if you're the type of fan who has these two films committed to memory, fret not. You could give the Tim Curry starrer Adam's Family Reunion a chance. Since it wasn't that well received, not a lot of people know about it. And if you've seen that as well, then I don't know. Binge Wednesday again or start watching Lisa's filmography. As for me, I am going to sign off with a tiny prayer for the late actress. I hope she's having a blast wherever she is. See you.